Audio. This is A.R. Cavley. Welcome back to my channel as we are going back into the world of Hostile Solo and following Agent Rizzo and Agent Shank as they try to track down these ne'er-do-wells who have made off with some kind of alien sample. When we left last time, they had just got to Nexus City which is the city in South America that uh, has the trans-atmospheric petroleum pipeline going up into orbit to Liberty Station. Now Rizzo brings up a good point. Why, why do we come here though? What's, why, they could take off anywhere if they're trying to get off world. That's true, but this is the only place that we know that they have contacts. And if we can find that guy, you know, they're not getting out of LaGuardia and probably nowhere from North America. Right? But, you know, the CAS isn't, isn't perfect. This is a place we know they have got contacts, and this is a place where a lot of people come and go. So as they pull the information up on this person, well, let's generate that guy. All right, so I have randomly determined that the local marshal contact the guy who speaks to them about stuff and gives them access to whatever is a Deputy Chief Malcolm Bishop. And Beth Cobos is the name of the inspector. And she works for a local Marinko amp and uh norinko ammunition production site and that's that's where she's operating from and that is apparently where she's uh getting that uh, getting that black market those black market bullets off to or from so they don't really they don't really have a lot of time to do some kind of, you know, fancy stakeout or anything like that. But let's take a, let's take a look at our, see if there's anything, see if something interesting happens. Let's see. Um... I don't know about any of that necessarily. Let's find let's let's get some info. Let's get just get some info about her real quick. We we'll use our theme. Our theme chart here. If I can remember where <laughs> remember where I put it. Uh, not looming crisis. No, no, no. Now I would have swore that I had it here. Oh, inspiration tables. There we go. Uh, let's see. Let's see what she is, personnel-wise. Let's see, six, two. Oh, she's attacked, or maybe she attacks. Actually, I, I, I think maybe she's attacked because someone suspects someone's trying to get rid of her. Okay, and let's go ahead and go with a. Let's go with a, 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 an action. Four, five, preserve. Okay, so I, I think she is. She's she's being she's being attacked. She's trying to preserve her life. <clears throat> so we'll go with that. They can't get a hold of her. They 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 don't. You know, she doesn't answer her 
her phone, so they call into to where she works at that at the ammunition place, and they actually show up there looking for her. They find her boss, and they ask some basic procedural questions. You know how the how the ammo is inspected and things like that. And of course, she like <laughs> like the other one. She apparently hasn't been she hasn't been to work for a couple of days. She said she was sick, but she's only been approved for a for two days, and she's two days past that, and she's. She's really risking her job, the angry supervisor, it tells them. They get a they get a good picture of her, which they probably already had. And yeah, maybe not. But they get a good picture of her. They get all of her other information. The supervisor doesn't want any trouble with the marshals, so he cooperates. He doesn't have any he he doesn't care about her. Uh, in that regard, she's he's in, in the sense he's not trying to protect her or anything like that. So they get the information, they find out the procedures, and let's see, do they talk about? Does he get anything? I'm just going to roll to see if our detective gets anything useful from him. Just the, the interview. He's not, it's not trying to trick him out or anything because the guy is cooperating. But to see if he finds something, just to see if you're right, ask the right questions. Okay, not really. He doesn't find anything out. He, so he just kind of sticks with the same questions. And he decides, at this point, he decides not to talk about the missing ammunition simply because he might be involved somehow. And he does, and uh, oh, Shank doesn't want to blow, you know, blow the cover that they know about that. They go home and, or they go to her home. We say it's most likely that okay she was attacked. It's possible it could be random violence, but I think it would be you know fit better into the story. But it could also be that if she's dealing black market with these guys, she probably has other gangster types that she needs to uh, or that she deals with. Maybe she was attacked and fled to some other kind of criminal contact that she has. Hmm. I would say it's most likely that she is being taken out just to help cover the tracks of these uh, these Marines or these assassins, these professionals. On a five or a six, it's somebody else, though. Maybe it's somebody else that attacked her. Maybe even law enforcement. Maybe they found out something on their own before our wayward marshals got here. So five or six, it's something besides the Marines with the uh, with the tattoo. No, all right, one. So it is definitely, definitely the Marines, or, or involved at least in that. I I guess really it could be the. You know, it could be the the movement. What are they called? The tan, not Tannerite, Tanique, the Tanique movement. But I, I think with that role, she she was definitely a, attacked by our tattooed people. Um, I guess we can, for, for lack of a better word. Um, Not Rizzo, the other guy, Shank. For lack of a better word, Shank has taken to call them Medites. Well, he's not that. Note, note that down. Shank calls them Medites. Partly because it sounds ridiculous and that amuses him. 
All right, so these Medites, they're the ones involved. They attacked, but she oh dang, what was the other? <laughs> I forgot what the other um oh her action was to oh preserve. All right, so she's trying to I'm gonna say she's just gonna try to preserve herself or preserve her her business or whatever. So she has hidden somewhere and now they need to track her down so let's go ahead and take a look at our they're basically going to have to go on a mission to find her and so we're going to generate that using these missions these mission tables for the campaign six let's see So to get to her someplace in Nexus City, we know the goal. We're supposed to, to get her. They show up at her place. Is she there? Only on a six. No. So she's not there, but they do find that it that it's been busted into. They they'll search for some clues. We'll do that. So they find the place has been, has been busted into. It, ha it hasn't been completely destroyed, but it's definitely been tossed, probably, as they're looking for whoever did it is looking for clues where they are as well. And we'll give, we'll give Justin Shank, we'll give him his investigate as he, uh, he, of course, he brings in the, you know, some of the local marshal people to help run the forensics and all that kind of stuff. So an investigate, I'd say it's pretty standard to see if he can find anything that she, that, that might help them. Nope. So she, she's very careful about her stuff or the people who came here already found and destroyed or took or whatever. So no, no hints this way, nothing on site that, that helps them. But they decide that they have to, as they're looking through the uh, her file, maybe monitoring some of her phone calls and things like that, their mission target, who they actually have to get to, to get to her, is a seven, a corporate executive. Is he, nor is this corporate executive Norinko? Like maybe he, my, my thought is that he's probably involved in her little black market scheme and maybe he's done something with her or is helping her hide or whatever is involved somehow because he's involved in her black marketeering. So I'm going to say on a four through six, this corporate exec is someone she works with. Otherwise it's a corporate exec for a, another company. Maybe she's. You know, if she's in the black market, maybe she's doing corporate espionage. Okay, so it's with another company. Let's see. All right, well, we already did this uh, deadly alien microorganism. But let's see if there's a, let's see if there's a mission item. Maybe something that they found that kind of leads even though he he failed his investigation role uh this this item he maybe they can't directly link it and we'll see what it, 11 a crucial antidote or medical drug treatment So they don't they don't find it, but I'm going to use that as a as an inspiration. That that's her connection to this corporate executive. So I'm I'm getting a picture that maybe Miss uh, what's her name Kobos Kobos. 
Kobos. That, that this Beth Kobos, maybe she's some kind of small time fixer or or smuggler, and she has a business with. She has her hands in the ammo, and her side hustle or whatever is a black marketeer for a bunch of different things. And this medicine, we'll say we'll say it's rare, and for whatever reason, the executive maybe he he can't get it through normal lines because it's for a condition that would maybe get him fired or is very embarrassing. Say something like that. But they do get, they do connect those dots from, say, phone phone conversations. They get a hold of this executive. And they go in, they they find him. How how high level is this guy? Oh, okay. So he's 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 big time. He's big time. Uh, you know, we're talking like a, a CEO, CFO level. So they're going in. Obviously, they can't. This guy's pretty powerful. They can't, you know, just bust in, especially since they are kind of the newbies in town. They're the <laughs> the marshal, the local marshals. They're willing to help where they can. But like you, like the uh, um, the guy says. What's what's this guy? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm says Malcolm Bishop. That's a nice aliens type name. Malcolm Bishop tells him, you know, up in New York, you guys get to sit on your ass all day. All right, down here we have to we have to run every scumball that comes down from Liberty Station. All right, we've got to go up to Liberty Station. We got to go down from Liberty Station. We got to investigate reports board ships and every we're basically just overworked custom officer customs officers all right we don't have time to go jaunting on a bunch of fancy new york cases okay so they're not you know they are cooperative they're not openly hostile or anything but they're not really going to go out of their way to help them so So they, they're going to talk to this executive and got to make something happen. We got to got to have something something happen. So as they're running around this um, this area, let's take a look at our investigation table. Ten. So it's an NPC. So as they're as they're tracking this down, they run. They come across this. Uh, oops. Come on. Okay. Okay. Three. Ooh. Corporate security. All right. So corporate security. Three five. And a derelict. Oh. Five two. A derelict laboratory. Well, that's interesting. So maybe this. So I think this security guy. I think she did. She barely managed to escape, or she got word that these guys were looking for her. She came home in her um, her house. Miss Kobos, Miss Kobos, our little fixer smuggler lady. And she got hold of the CEO, the CEO guy who have, who's the one who needs this medicine, this, this restricted medicine, this secret medicine. Maybe he's an addict, I don't know. It's not really relevant at, yet. It might be, but right now it's not. And he has set her up with... A security, a, a, uh, like one or two of his, we'll say two of his bodyguards, 
and they are basically hiding out in this derelict laboratory. And that sounds like the perfect place to have something happen, right? This abandoned laboratory. It's abandoned lab. Is it a medical lab? Is it someplace that... Um, probably not. On a six, five, five or six, it has something to do with her medical supplies for the CEO. No. So it's... Uh, it's some place that the CEO knows, probably something that his company has shut down, uh, corporate real estate, you know, it's, it's very expensive, so they probably shut it down, and he's got those two there. But something is definitely going to happen. What is going to happen? Right, so I'm deciding what what table to use. However, let's uh, let's see our urban description. What kind of area? We like to use these tables when we can. Three five flags on motorbikes, huh? That's kind of interesting. So maybe this maybe this area is abandoned, and a bunch of a, a particular. Maybe a, a a gang or some kind of underground, some kind of underground. That's what it is. Some kind of underground motocross races through these these buildings where the uh, not necessarily inside the buildings, but around the complexes where this abandoned laboratory is. Let's take a look at our inspiration uh, table and we're going to roll here on the action because I, I, I don't want everything to just be a shootout with these Marines, right, They're, or whoever they are. I want it to, I, I want to mix it up a little bit. Maybe it's a, I don't know, shootout with drug cartel or, or a shootout with the local Girl Scouts. I, I, I don't know, but... Uh, not everything, um, you know, I just want, I just don't want it to turn into they go from place to place just shooting people wherever they go. It makes for, you know, it makes for fun gaming, but kind of, uh, it can turn into something that's just overused and gets kind of boring, right? They're not murder hobos, they're U.S. Marshals. Two and a three. Falter, falter, falter. I'll throw something else in there. Five, three, falter and fine, falter and fine. So it's not, it doesn't have to do with that, with finding the guy's medicine, so probably not that. Um, I think maybe she's she's getting ready. She wants to go. Her her faith in in staying here is starting to falter. We'll say that that's what it is. Her her arrangement, her seeking help from this guy, even though he has kept her alive for a couple of days and set her here, he she is starting to get antsy about staying in one place too long. So she's trying to get away, or she's trying to convince them to move. And our, so how would, so of course now I've got to, well, I came up with the guards, but I didn't really, that's, that's what they encounter. So through the, through their investigation, they found out that she's connected with this CEO. That was maybe the last call, the last communication that they are able to find had to do with him. They don't necessarily know about the, the medicine, but as they go to investigate the CEO, he doesn't want anything to do with them. He's a big guy. So they, they watch and they ask around a little bit what they can get. You know, that like I said, they can't go in and 
you know, muscle him around. He he's he's too big. But they do find they do realize that from say maybe investigating or asking like the chauffeur or the the receptionist or something that two of his two of his normal bodyguards are gone and they manage to find out well, let's see would they manage to find out maybe they need to they're going to try to yeah okay so they're going to they're going to try they being just and shank He's going to try to bust in using, he's going to try to, let's see, I think that they're going to try the somewhat shady attempt. They're going to try to do some computer hacking. They're going to try to break in to the database. Someone, someone mentioned that the two of the guards had been missing. And they're going to take a look for the guards. Once once they did that, the the lady is like, "Oh, sorry, I've said too much. No, officer, I I can't tell you anything else." So what they're going to do is take a look at. They're going to see if they can crack into the 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 corporate mainframe using computers. See, would they be from the marshals? I don't know. That'd be kind of obviously illegal. But no, you know what? I, I think they're able to actually, they're going to be able to use that. They're going to get a warrant. And they're going to get it approved because they have that information. They just, they just want to find out who these people are the CEO and, and they know that trying to go the legal route and, and talk about getting that, that the CEO is not going to go for that. So they they will be able to use the computer lab, the computer assets lab, the security lab or whatever at Nexus City for the marshals, which is probably going to be at least as good, if not better than the one in New York City. So they're going to make attempts to hack in and find out their main the main what they're going to be looking for is to find out who these guards are that these bodyguards that have gone missing with the presumption that may that she called him and so maybe he sent the guards to put her on ice for a little bit or whatever but they need to talk to her because she has information about who these people actually are all right so we're just going to do a hacking roll, and I'm going to say it's it's going to be difficult because if if he's that powerful, then they probably have some pretty good security. But they he's going to have assistance from Robert, Rizzo, and they're going to, they have a good they have a good lab. So I'm going to give it a difficulty of ten. And a total of a plus three DM between the skill levels and the bonus and everything else. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, they're in there like like a knife through butter. In fact, that's such a good that's such a good role. I'm gonna say that they um they, they get it all they get everything they want so uh, justin's he's clicking away and robert rizzo's clicking away justin shank they're they're clicking away oh, hey you see this yeah they're still using that old 42 protocol you'd think that a company like this would have uh have a better a better it department I can tell you in real life that's not always the case. Bigger doesn't mean bigger, better. <laughs> and so they they crack through. They got it all. They they've got all of his. Uh, they've got his. Not his personal communications because he would not probably do that through the corporate database. But they do find information on 
he has he, a lot of his contacts, all what's going on. They find out where they're going, and it turns out that he actually did give them give the uh, his two security guys. He gave them some kind of info using corporate channels and the location of the laboratory. So they know exactly where where they're at now. Maybe not directly say, "Hey, go to here," but he he looked up some files, and then immediately after the, he he found this the file for the lab, pulled up its you know its corporate info, and then sent it out to these guys. So they know the two guards. They know exactly where they're at. They believe that's probably where she's going to be at too. So they crack they crack through that no problem. And feeling 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 fancy and fine about themselves, they head on down to this laboratory. And as they are this abandoned building, it's a it's it's a rundown part of Nexus City. And it for whatever reason, maybe fluctuations in the market, maybe bad groundwater. You know who knows this. Area it's like a uh, it's like a an industrial park. Well, not not an industrial park, but like a corporate park where they have the 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 various buildings that companies used to work in, they set up their offices, and there are obviously a couple that are still working, but a lot of them are shut down. A lot of them are. It's obvious that they haven't been taken care of for a while, but they know exactly where they're at, so they're approaching this place I would have a I have a hard time thinking that the Marines necessarily know where they're at but like I said I don't want everything to turn into some some kind of shootout so we'll say at this point they don't know where they're at I mean they they you know our guys our heroes they got a you know a 12 a natural 12 so that's a great role. So they're way ahead of these guys. They get in there. They find the place. Uh, let's see. They're kind of hiding out at a safe house. Is it going to have some kind of security measures? You know, maybe like a CCTV or something like that. Um, I'm going to say probably not. On five or a six. Okay, so there's no there's no big security measures. It's all, you know, I mean the the they're in the place. It's livable. They approach. They can hear some kind of some kind of conversation. It's not a desperate conversation or anything like that, but they get to this building and they see they're able to kind of peer in. They see that there's lights on the door. All right, this is the place. You ready, kid? The kid, he's kind of, he's, he's looking nervous again. Yeah. All right, we don't know how these guys are going to, you know, we don't know if they're going to jump or what. But we're going to keep it above board. We're going to go fishing. All right. Um, and remember what we got, we got legally, mostly. All right. So. Just relax. Okay. And so Shank pounds on the door. Colonial Marshals, open up. Do, 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 do. We know you're in there. And he, he shouts out the guards' names. I don't feel like I need to go look them up. We know you're in there. And we know that you have Miss Corbos with you. Corbos, what's her name? Cobos, we know you have Miss Cobos with you. We have an arrest warrant for her. You will turn her over to us, or you will all be joining her. And so, these guys, they're our bodyguards. They don't really feel like going to jail. Uh, so... He, he shows them, you know, someone cracks the door. We don't know who you're talking about. Get out of here. He shows them his badge. He shows them his, his marshal's badge and says, as a member 
of the Marshal's Office and the CAS, duly appointed under the CAS organization. That's the Combine of American States. Oh, what does that stand for? Always have to look that up. I want to, I want to keep saying Confederation of American States. Uh, that's the Community of American States, duly appointed by the Community of the American States. Surrender Miss Kobos to us. We know she's in there. We know that you work for so and so, and he explains the whole thing. And I think I don't think I need to roll. I think these guys are just gonna play it above board. So they take her, they get her out of there because they, you know, he doesn't want them calling their boss and in and, and causing some kind of issue. They want to get out of there as fast as they can. So they grab her and they drive her away. So she's now in their custody. And they're going to take her, still trying to keep it above board. They don't really have a, a reason to, to get all shadowy or anything yet. They take her to the interrogation rooms at the marshal's office and try to find out what they can. And, of course, what they want to know from her is they want to know who is after her. Look, of course, all that other stuff's got to stop, all right? We know what you're doing. We've got your we've got your inspector stamp on ammo that these assholes were using, all right? That these assholes shot at me with. And she she starts she starts looking a little nervous as they put more and more proof on the table that they know what she's been up to. And we know also what you're providing for Mr. CEO, right? They don't actually know exactly what it is, but <laughs> enough to let her, you know, stew. So this is going to go one of two ways, all right? It's going to go easy for me or hard for you, all right? What's easy for me is that you tell me who these assholes are that you gave this ammo to. I want names. I want faces. I want everything you've got. If you've got secret books, files, I want them. They'll kill me. We will give you full protection. So they go on and she's she's willing to she's willing to cooperate. She knows that those guys are bad news. They've been they went to her house, so she's been hiding because of that. And she's happy, you know, to have protection. And obviously she doesn't, she's not really big fan of the law enforcement since she's kind of a criminal, but she, she realizes that she got involved with people well beyond what she's usually involved with. Somehow they knew, you know, she explains that somehow they knew who she was. They, they had uh, contacts and names. They paid in, you know, in untraceable credit file or whatever. And she gave them what they wanted. And she's going to give the cops, she's going to give our detectives here, our, our marshals, what they want. Let's see. So I think... Let's see how much how much does she actually know? Ah, she doesn't know shit. <laughs> so, but obviously she she's going to know something that'll get them get them going forward into onto the next uh, onto the next place. Let's see what what would she know? What would she what what should she could she tell him? A location, a name. Would it be somebody, another name, maybe? Hmm. Let me ponder. All right, so she she doesn't know as much as they were hoping, but she does know something. And let's use our inspiration, our inspiration table. 
Let's wrong one. We need hostile solo. What would that be? Let's see. Action theme. I'm going to roll and we'll see what works best, whether the, uh, the action or theme. All right, so three, three. So she's able to tell them about change or duty. Change of duty. Well, Let's see, neither one of those. Let's see, he's overly duty, duty, duty. Let's see. So if she knows somebody, we'll say that maybe is still on duty, someone who is on duty. Maybe one of the guys that's there is actually on active duty. There is a naval base here in Nexus City. And if there's a naval base, there's some jarheads. Ah, I, I think that's it. Either somebody that's on duty or that person connected them and she's going to give them that next person. On a five or six, it's actually one of those guys is actually on, is, is still in a, on active duty. And he's either stationed either permanently or TPD um, at, that, at that base, five or six. Otherwise, it's somebody at that base that are a bad guy that we're tracking down knows. Okay, so somebody on that base, somebody who's still on duty, she knows. And between, between the information that she's able to give and their access to the Community of American States database, uh, we'll say that they're, they're, able to find, they're able to find out who it is. They pull up his record and she says, yep, yeah, that's him, that's him. Are they close? No, not at all. So she just knows him because he somehow knew about what she did. Maybe he had some other kind of contact, but he was the one that put, she, she, she may even actually have some kind of dealings with this guy too, you know, some kind of black marketeer working on the base. And so he's just a contact to her. But she's the but he, this this guy this person might be a girl this person is the one who put the marine dudes the uh, the tats the 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 D knights you know what they were uh, oh medites oh, who put the medites or the medians medians maybe sounds better. Uh, he's the one who put the medians in contact with her. She gave them un, untraceable ammo. So now they're going to go talk to that guy. And probably a lower level guy. He might even be in the Navy. So let's see. On a five or six, he's... I'm going to say one through three, he's in the Navy. Five or six, or... or one through three, he's in the Navy. Five through six, he's Marine. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, and it's because he's a six, he's actually directly connected to those guys. A five or six, he may even actually have a tattoo. He may be one of the, He may have the tattoo, but it's not actually a, a D-Knight. Or a Median. Okay, so... No, he doesn't. He just knows. He knows the guy... Uh, somehow so they catch him they they wait for him to come off shift and does he live on base i say f probably good probably good four through six no so he doesn't live off base so that probably means that he's he's married 
Because generally, if you're on, if you're living off base and you're in the military, unless things have changed in the last two hundred years, which they might, uh, he, he's he's living off base because he can't get base housing, and uh, so he he's off base with his with his people. They show up, and anything dramatic happen? No. All right. He shows up. They show up. They're uh, they find this guy. He's he's having dinner, watching the, the the vids with his with his wife and kids, and he pulls him out. They pull they pull him outside. I need to talk with you, petty officer. Look, you can either come outside or we can have this conversation in front of your family. All uh, right, he's sorry. He's a marine, <laughs> not a petty officer, corporal. The corporal, we can either have this conversation in front of your family or we can have it outside. And at this point, it is just a conversation. And so it gets up and he's going, they're going to try to get all the information that they, they can out of, out of him. Are they able to get what they need? They want, they want information. They want a name. They want a location of this guy and he's kind of low level but he's not a snitch but he's in the military so he's kind of got that hanging over his head about not cooperating um so we'll see we'll see if they can convince him if they can use the right the right pretty words there we go all right and still not a great amount of info, but they he obviously has a name. He he has a name. Look, man, he just I mean, I served with him before. I knew him. He just wanted a he just wanted a place to get so don't give me that bullshit. All right, we know. We know what she sells and what she does. So don't make it worse. What's his name? Where is he? All right, so look, man, his name is Julio Quezada. All right, he, uh, you know, just call him Too Queer. That's his nickname. I mean, he's not queer or nothing, but well, you know how the military is. <laughs> you know, everyone, look, I'm not interested in how the military is. Where is he? See, is he still is he still active duty? I'm gonna say probably not. Uh, on a five or six, he's still active duty. Yeah, so he's he he is he's not active duty, although he's obviously working for the median the medians. <laughs> um, yeah, he's in town. He was he came by just the other day looking for. Uh, Looking for Corbos or Cobos. Asked where she was at. I just told her where the same place. They he said she was gone. He got real pissed, man. He looked he looked like he was kind of panicked. Did he tell you where he's at? Well, I've got his he he, he gave me this number. And I was supposed to call him if if I heard anything. Give me that number, please. So the guy, he goes back in, he gets the number, brings it out. All right. So here's the thing. What you're doing is going to get your ass hanged, right? You can't just go around selling shit like that off of the base. I don't want to cause anybody any trouble. You got a nice family in there. But you're on our list. All right, and if I find out that you have actually been involved in anything that comes up, you toast. Hey, look, man, I'm just, I, I don't want to hear it. Just stop your shit. And you know, if, if this guy calls you, if Tulio calls you, you don't tell him that we talked. You got it? If I find out that happened, then I'm going to put you 
in a freaking lunar prison camp. All right, all right. So they got the they got the number. They're gonna go back and let's see. Are they gonna be able to? I'm gonna assume that this number is somehow you know it, it's like a, a a hidden line or something like that. But he's going to he's gonna to try to he's gonna to try to crack it. Let's see. Would he be able to? I'm gonna assume it would be you know phones, of course, in, in hostile. They're not they're not quite the same, although I generally tend to play it like you know, in, in the front in the core worlds, things are a little closer to to cell phones than the you know than the retro stuff. So I'm gonna give them a roll, they're gonna go back to the lab, they're gonna to try to find out where this call connects. Maybe, you know, send out like a little like a little keep alive signal or something and see if they can track it. You know, some kind of uh well that's not quite pseudo <laughs> pseudo uh tech babble, but Ooh, it is a little bit. All right, let's see. Would that be an investigation or a security? I think, I think probably investigation because they are, you know, they're using the uh, the equipment to find information out. Uh, if they didn't have the lab, then maybe I would I would make them I make maybe make them roll security like he's hacking info from the phone or something. But I think in this case, probably an investigate. And because I'm just going to make it a, a, a regular eight roll because they've got the lab and they're going to have, you know, contacts and uh, cooperation from local telco and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no bueno. So this particular phone, it is... It is. It has got some kind of super hack. Maybe this guy used his ability, uh, used his contacts uh, to give him some kind of like the equivalent of a burner phone or something. It it's wiped. There's no there's no information on it that that they can pull uh, using the lab or whatever. So they're going to have to. They're going to have to get that guy to call him. So if they do, it's been a long day. They've been running around and... So the next the next day, they get they get up early. They go to the base. Um, uh, Naval base nexus or or whatever it's called. They get to the base, and they're gonna go there and they're gonna wait. They 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 know this guy, the um the corporal they know his chain of command they they're easily able to pull that stuff up and they wait for him to get on duty they are working with the ncis assuming that it hasn't changed its name yet um i was actually in when they went from the nis to the ncis because of some uh, scandals but i digress <laughs> I mean, I wasn't in the NIS. I was just in the Navy. Um, and so they bring him in, and they sit him down, and they make him call. Now, what are they going to want? They're going to want to try to get this guy to meet them somewhere. Um... Let's see, and they're gonna, and they're trying to get him. You know, they're explaining to him. They they've had to tell NIS or NCIS about 
you know, this, this guy's activities to get them on board. And so he, he's already in, in, in trouble. He comes in, they explain this to him. He knows he's in trouble. He's hanged dog. He's been caught. Um, and so he, he's probably going to be going to at least restriction for a, for a long time, probably longer, you know, more than that, if he's been selling goods. Um, So they're gonna they're gonna convince him to get to, to contact a guy, try to keep it short, you know, say, look, I'm at work, I can't I can't tell you, but I know where she's at. I'm supposed to meet her at here and here and here. That's that's what they'll do. All right. That's she said she was gonna be there. She wants to meet about something, and you know, whatever. You better play it right. You're already in a lot of trouble. You try to get tricky with this, and you're going to fry. So let's see. How how good does this guy do with the, with, with the, the, you know, the, um, the coaching and everything else that they've, that, that Shank and them, how well does he do with the, how, how well does he do being coached? You know, does he freak out, whatever? Let's just roll and see. Eight. Okay. I, I think that's good enough. The guy, um, he, you know, hey, man, look. We've got to, um, so I, I, I guess really, so they, they know the guy's name. And so they're able to pull his file up and everything, too. I guess we kind of, I kind of skipped past that part because they did, um, you know, they, 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 they did tell, you know, did tell the guy who it is, and the guy does know them. So, so yeah, they, they, they have Tulio's info, they pull up his record and everything, and of course, you know, he's, uh, um, you know, had, had a pretty exemplary record, combat vet, wounded, you know, kind of a marine badass type of person, and so he gets... Tulio on the phone and he says look he's she's she's made contact with me and she's going to meet me here if you want her that's that's the best place because I think she's getting ready to bolt and so the call goes well they take the phone and it, it's it's going to burn out it's not going to it's not going to connect anymore because Tulio is not going to accept the call and whatever anyway. So now they set they they set the sting. They get they have her and they get her to sit in a let's see. Yeah, it's not going to be any place that's like super um super open uh to start with but um someplace at least that's somewhat public um you know what let's see let's use let's use one of our tables where are they the scenario site where are they going to meet a four and a four okay so a street market so it is actually going to be a public place and that's so um that's okay with that's okay with her because she's gonna be out in the open so they set up this sting operation they set it up they call they get they actually get some they get other officers from the marshal's department they get a whole team together they even have like a tactical team uh, ready to go to try to get this guy. And we'll have to wait till next time. As they are waiting around, they've got everything set up. The time that this guy is supposed to come meet them is uh, ticking down. She is in the market. She's wired. Right. Now, 
she doesn't even really have to get in a conversation or anything with him. They they are they just need him to show up and they need to 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 capture him so they can get information. But like I said, that will have to wait till next time and happy gaming.